Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today we are kicking off Series 13 VGC, which is a brand new rule set which allows for all mythical Pokemon, and it is just pure chaos. You can use as many mythical and restricted Pokemon as you want, and it is not something we've ever really had in VGC before. Of course, this is really meant to be a more fun and casual format. It's really, you know, the last few months of Sword and Shield, and there are no, you know, events anymore. The World Championships just concluded, and so it's just going to be pure chaos, but of course, I want to make some content around Series 13. And for myself, I've actually never really used a lot of these mythical Pokemon before. I actually, like, have no idea what some of them do, so it's a good learning experience for me as well. So to kick things off, I wanted to use a Magearna team that features Toy Scarf Victini as well as Magearna. This was built by a player called Raised in Teo. Uh, we've actually used some of their teams before on Road to Ranked, and they got top 8 on an online tournament with this, and so I just recreated in-game. I've linked the original pace of the team down in the description below. I made some very small changes in terms of EV spreads and items, uh, but otherwise, yeah. The idea of the team is that you have both Tailwind and Trick Room, and it has Magearna, which is a super, you know, interesting Pokemon in this format because it can snowball so incredibly fast with Soul Heart, his ability. So, as always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps in the description below. Thanks so much, as always, for watching. If you enjoy, please share your support by leaving a like. And question of the day, I want to know what your first impressions of the format are. For me, I actually played about 20 games last night and got to Master Ball tier just to, like, get some experience. This format is really chaotic, <laughs> and I, I think I'm interested in team building in it because I'm curious to see how, like, players can really, you know, uh, create teams that give them one step ahead, of, like, relative to the competition, uh, but it is just pure chaos. I lost a ton yesterday while trying to learn the format, and I don't think I have a good grasp of it at all yet, uh, but I'm excited to go through this journey with all of you just because, yeah, for me, it's literally the first time I've seen some of these Pokemon uh, in competitive play, and so I don't have experience fighting against them at all, uh, and it's always good to, you know, build up your experience base, and so I've been talking on long enough. Let's quickly break down the team. So the idea behind this team is that you have two primary modes, right? And the first one is this Victini plus Magirna mode. And so with this combination, Victini with the Choice Scarf and Final Gambit can just pick up a quick knockout onto something while also sacrificing itself. This combos really nicely with Magirna because Magirna's ability Soul Heart gives it a boost every time a Pokemon faints, and that can be either your Pokemon or your opponent's Pokemon. So if Victini successfully gets Final Gambit off, then, you know, not only does it KO itself, it also KOs the opponent. That's two special attack boosts over to Magirna immediately, right? Uh, and then the idea is if you lead Victini Magirna and they don't expect it, you snipe something off, Magirna sets up Trick Room, you bring in Amoongus, you can Spore, and then Magirna just sweeps the game from there. However, it's actually not that easy in execution in about 20 plus games that I've played while practicing and learning the format. Uh, I don't think I actually ever got that off more than maybe once or twice. And part of the problem is that like Final Gambit is just pretty scary to use against Pokemon you think are going to Dynamax. It's also a fighting type attack, so it doesn't go into ghost types such as Calyrex Shadow Rider, and Calyrex in itself can be pretty scary to deal with. And so you also have U-Turn, V-Create, and Wild Charge. U-Turn is actually really nice with this team. I find myself a lot of times actually clicking U-Turn to break potential Focus Sashes and get positioning to switch out into something like Amoongus, Kyogre, or Zacian in the back. Magirna is a Pokemon that, you know, is just really strong thanks to its ability. It has great base special attack, and the idea is with Soul Heart, you can snowball really quickly. There's Safety Goggles. This was the um, item on the original team. I didn't actually run into too many opposing Amoonguses, so I think you could definitely trade this for something like a Shukaberry, for example, or even a Life Orb. Plenty of options on Magirna. Safety Goggles is just to make sure that you don't hard lose to like opposing Amoonguses immediately. I've just played so few Amoonguses thus far, though. And so, yeah, you can definitely uh, play around a little bit with the item choices here, right? But the idea is you've got Trick Room. Uh, the Magirna here actually doesn't have Flare Cannon because you want to go with more consistent damage with Dazzling Gleam and Flash Cannon. And this Magirna idea will stay out on the field for a very long time, right? Uh, and so Amoongus is a really nice partner for it. Uh, the original paste had pop Bright Powder. I changed it to Koba Berry, but Koba Berry was actually literally never relevant in any of the games, so I actually think Bright Powder is a better choice. Uh, Black Sludge, I think, is also fine. Uh, you could go with Focus Sash, but the Sash currently is committed on the Evil Tall on this team. And so the idea of the Amoongus is just classic. You know, it's really bulky. You've got Pollen Puff to heal the Magirna up as well. Magirna and Amoongus can be a solid lead, but in this format, it's a lot more volatile because there's so many spread type attacks, like Precipice Blades from Groudon and Water Spot from from Kyogre, Astro Barrage from Calyrex. So be really careful because you can just lose the game if you lead Magirna Amoongus and your opponent outleads you. 
To round out the team, you've got Assault Vest Kyogre. The idea of Assault Vest Kyogre here is that it could utilize Tailwind from Evoltal, but it also functions fairly well under Trick Room because it doesn't have that much speed investment here. And so, yeah, it's a really bulky Pokemon that's difficult to take care of and is one of your better Dynamax options with this team. You're mainly going to max Magearna, Kyogre, and Evoltal, depending on, you know, how the game goes. Uh, they're all pretty consistent with this team. The Zacian here is a very classic, just jolly, max speed, max special attack. This really takes me back to the beginning of Series 12 VGC. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of players nowadays opt for bulkier Zacians in Series 12, right? The Zacian that just won the World Championship had like max HP uh, and, you know, definitely not max speed. It was admin nature. The idea with Jolly Zacian here is like you just have uh, a lot more confidence when you're fighting against opposing Zacians, right? Uh, at worst, you speed type, but uh, a you know, good amount of times you are just going to outspeed the opposing Zacians guaranteed. And that's really nice because the Zacian here is designed to just pick up knockouts, right? Key thing to note is that it doesn't have a fighting type attack, and that's because Incineroar isn't nearly as common in this format. It's still used, but the thing is that it like... Uh, you're often going to bring it in for what just a single intimidate and then it just faints right like it's just hard to justify bringing in over restricted pokemon it's still a decent call like it's one of the better non-restricteds in this format uh but as a result like you don't really need a fighting type attack as much and wild charge is really valuable into things like opposing evil tall uh kyogre uh, especially you know water types in general and so yeah very rarely will it happen but you can also of course like max lightning from kyogre or even victini and then zashin can take advantage of the electric train uh, the final Pokemon here is Focus Ash Evoltal with Tailwind, Dark Pulse, Oblivion Wing, and Taunt. And uh, so the idea is that you have Tailwind here. So you can lead something like Evoltal Kyogre, Evoltal Zacian, and like either just attack with the Pokemon and Tailwind immediately, or protect Tailwind on turn one, right? So you have two completely different modes with the team. There are a lot of ways to lead, but you know, I've gone with like Magirna Mungus a lot, Victini Magirna a lot, or Evoltal plus one of like Victini, Kyogre, or Zacian. So yeah. So that's, uh, that's all I got to say right now, but I'm really curious to see how Magirna can function in this format. Uh, a lot of people were like, oh, this Pokemon is absolutely broken, and uh, I'm curious to see if that is the case. So yeah, let's dive into today's battles. All right, for this one, we've got Kyogre, Zashi, and Calyrex Evil told with Urshifu and Gastrodon. This could potentially be a really good Magirna Amoongus game, but it's about how I can actually get that going because Kyogre can water spell or just geyser me like normally I would lead Victini Magirna I mean I don't think it's bad here the problem with Victini and Final Gambit is just always worrying about something Dynamaxing turn one into Magirna um Zacian's honestly just really powerful into my opponent's team, so like I'm interested in Zacian and Magirna with the Moongus and Kyogre in the back. Yeah. I think Choice Guard Victini is fun, but it is not a Pokemon that I ever feel confident in, at least uh, in having played, you know, like 20 games of this format. And the reason for that is because it's like, if you don't get the final Gambit correctly, you lose so much, right? Like, let's say you final Gambit something like Dynamax is, you do like half its health, and then the Maxmon can just KO whatever is next to the Victini. So, with Victini, you need to have full conviction that whatever you're clicking Final Gambit into is not going to die to Max. Um, but yeah, Amoongus here can just put everything to sleep, and then Magirna does really solid damage across the board, and can be a solid Dynamax option as well. Um, the slower component of their team is Calyrex and Gastrodon. I don't think they'll bring Urshifu. Evil Tall, or sorry, Zacian in the early game should be able to apply a lot of offensive pressure because I can also just like wild charge into Kyogre, which is cool. So let's see. Evil Tall and Calyrex. Uh, this could be Focus Sash Calyrex. It's one thing to watch out for. Obviously, I could Trick Room here. Question is, do I really want to do that? Like, I actually prefer, I think, maxing Magirna and Steel Spiking here. For example, the play I'm most interested in is actually ignoring Calyrex turn one and going for Behemoth Blade onto Evil Tall, max and Steel Spike onto it. I'm down for that. I guess the other thing is this could theoretically be speedy uh, Calyrex. Like, I've seen a couple of Focus Sash max speed Calyrexes. One of the crazy things about this format is it's just kind of 
comes uh, often i wouldn't say comes down to but i was uh, the point is like you can have focus sash on like every restricted pokemon now because it's like the, the sheer power is just crazy right perfect evil um not evil tall uh calyrex protects okay beautiful so i don't know if i needed to dynamax magirna but the logic in maxing here is like i can steal spike to get a defense boost which is really valuable on both of these pokemon so we don't ko evil tall i could have clicked play rough there instead they do tailwind uh that's frustrating because trick room actually would have been incredible there then but that's okay we'll get a steel spike off here so i get a defense boost which is obviously valuable on zashian but the problem is now they can just go into kyogre and use water spout i wonder if they're focused ash on evil because if they weren't then play rough there could have actually just ko'd but i wanted to cover for max evil tall though i guess it makes literally no sense for evil tall to dynamax there so, I think Play Rough is actually a better option because, yes, it can miss, but at least it gives me a chance to KO them. So, let's see what they go into. The good thing is that their Calyrex is not really in a super good spot right now. But, I think if you have Kyogre here, you can just go out into that, and that causes me some issues immediately. Slightly bold of them to Tailwind in front of a potential Trick Room user in Magirna. Because if I'd actually just set up Trick Room there on turn 1, as they Tailwinded, they'd be in terrible shape. Kyogre comes out. You can obviously just go for Water Spout right now. You could just, like, Water Spout Max Quake. Or you could just Max Kyogre, right? I think here I'm down to protect and steel spike, but I do slightly risk um, max Kyogre. Sorry, Kyogre Water Spout, max Calyrex, and then Quake into the Magirna slot. So I'm curious who ends up maxing in this position. Okay, it is max Kyogre. Cool. That works for me. Max Kyogre is uh, honestly a lot less scary because now I can like redirect your attacks away from with the Moongus. Uh, Assault Vest Kyogre is a decent switch into Dynamax, Ky Dynamax Kyogre as well. And so, like, Zacian Protect here is just a stall to turn of Tailwind. Then I can switch Zacian out, Protect Amoongus, go from there. Here's Geyser. Cool, into Zacian. Okay, good. That puts me in a really good spot, I think, then. They just high horsepower. That's fine. Yep, with that defense boost, we take that quite nicely. Excellent. Magirna gets a second max steel spike. We have a special attack boost from earlier. Are you focus ashed? You're not. Perfect. So, that's two KOs with Magirna immediately on the board. Awesome. Now, it does give my opponent a free switch in, but we saw that one turn of Tailwind, which is good. I still have a turn of Dynamax to work with, which is also good. And the thing is, a wild charge with Zacian in the endgame will also be incredibly powerful into Kyogre. It can just get a one-hit knockout. It's one of the reasons why you'd want to run it. I'm actually, like, I was a little surprised to not see more wild charges. Um, okay, they bring out Zacian. Okay, so with Zacian now, how do I want to approach this right now? Because obviously you could just Behemoth, Blade, Magirna, Geyser into Zacian. Or Geyser, Magirna, Blade into Zacian. I don't know the item. You still have two turns of Tailwind. Like, the play I lean towards the most here is switching Zacian out into Amoongus and then Max Guarding Magirna. It's fairly obvious, but I think I'm still down to go for it. Uh, part of the key thing here is that I have Max Speed Zacian, right? So once I style out their Tailwind, I ha I can potentially just outspeed both Pokemon. Because most players actually aren't running max speed Zacian if they're, you know, coming from Series 12. But may maybe the metagame here is a little different. Perfect, they blade into the Magirna slot. Excellent. Oh, and they doubled up into a Mag Magirna. Okay. I feel like this should put me in just such a commanding position now. I can even Trick Room. Is Trick Room the right approach here? Like, the thing is, I don't know how fast their Zacian is, so I think I am down for Trick Room. Because, like, Rage Powder into Trick Room here is really safe. And the reason I want a Trick Room is because I know my Kyogre is slow as well, right? And then, like, Magirna will be at plus three special attack after this turn, if Amoongus faints, which it should. Okay, there's Behemoth Blade. Even if this, like, crits and KOs Amoongus, I think we're still in okay shape. Perfect. We live. And they geyser. 
I mean, the other approach there was actually simply just going for a Flash Cannon, but, like, I don't mind Trick Rooming here, because I know my Magirin is going to be the slowest Pokemon out on the field, and I also know I'm running a slow Assault Vest Kyogre. So, yeah. Soul Heart is just so sweet here. Like, we are, we've gotten, what, three special attack boosts already? Now I get Trick Room up as well. Great. Tailwind Peter's out on their end. We can just go out into Kyogre. The question is what I want to do this next turn, because obviously both Pokemon can potentially protect. It could be Assault Vest Kyogre on their end as well. I think I'm down to just Water Spout and Protect here. I guess the only problem is if they, like, double up onto my Kyogre, which seems really unlikely, because Magirna is the main threat right now. Well, I also am at plus two defense, actually, so for that reason, I'm down to just Dazzling Gleam and Thunder here. No, po uh, neither Pokemon Protect. Okay, that's fine. Plus three Gleam does a ton. Nice, Kyogre outspeeds, gets the Thunder off. This is one of the advantages of running a really slow Kyogre. Like, the odds of them being slower than us here is really slim. Given that Calyrex didn't have Focus Sash then, I wouldn't be surprised if the Sash was indeed on Evil Tall. But yeah, now Magirna is at plus 4, and I have uh, plus 2 defense. So I'm not even sure Behemoth Blade gets the knockout here. Let's see. Okay, they target Magirna. Nice! <laughs> Well, this is what Magirna can do in the format. I think it's a fairly difficult Pokemon to set up. Like, I don't think it's broken by any means, even though a lot of people are like, oh, it's just gonna, like, absolutely dominate the format. But I do think it's really good, and it, it can snowball the game so quickly. Like, Magirna Calyrex Ice Rider is a really strong duel, I think. So, yeah. Nice job, Magirna. What's interesting about this format is it's just so heavily centered around Tailwind or Trick Room, right? Like, a lot of teams run Whimsicott with Tailwind and they just try to overwhelm you with Tailwind and then some teams are slower paced with Trick Room. So, you know, makes sense that those are kind of the two dominant modes as of right now because it's like you're just playing with some of the strongest attackers in the format. So, yeah, let's look for another. Okay, next game here and we've got Regieleki, Incineroar, Kyogre, Evil Tall, Xerneas, and Zacian. It's funny, because after playing so much Series 12, I'm always like, oh, wow, like, what an interesting Series 12 team. Zacian, Aleki, Xerneas, and Cinera, and I'm like, oh, wait, but then they actually have four Restricteds. <laughs> this format is just so chaotic. Um, so basically, like, we want to get Trick Room up with Magirna, ideally. Like, Magirna and Amoongus is amazing here, but how do I get to that game state is the question. The other approach is to go with Tailwind with Evil Tall and sweep with like Evil Tall Kyogre. So like I could go Evil Tall Victini. The problem with this is that a uh, max speed Regieleki still outspeeds Choice Scarf Victini. Um, <laughs> there's this uh, ray of sun like coming right through my my window right now as well. So I'm trying to dodge it. Um. I mean, I'm kind of down for Magirna and Amoongus. It's just a Lucky plus Kyogre that scares me as a lead against this. Magirna and Amoongus, my own Kyogre, and then Zacian is the fourth. It's the Regieleki that scares me the most, I think. Victini is not bad here, but like, if they are max speed uh, Regieleki and then they just Electro of the Victini. It becomes very sad. We don't want to make Victini sad. It is just Evil Tall Kyogre here. Okay. Um, I'm Koba Berry on Amoongus here. Like, I don't know. Their play could be to just max Airstream plus Water Spout, to which Magirna can survive. Kyogre's faster than Evil Tall as well. So it could be Scarf Kyogre here then. If it's Scarf Ogre, like, I actually expect to survive Max Airstream plus Water Spell, so, like, I'm actually down to Protect Spore here, and then Rage Powder Trick Room the next turn. But maybe it's just Slow Bulky Evil Tall, that could be the other thing. Neither Pokemon Dynamax, okay. They just Spell? What is Evil Tall going for? It could be, like, Water Spout Heat Wave, which would be the very ideal output here. Yeah, we don't take that much from Water Spout, nice. 
Nice, and it's Snarl. Oh, that is amazing for us. Okay. I am very pleased about the outcome of that turn. It's pretty good damage onto Amoongus, but that's fine. I critically put Kyogre to sleep, so now the um, Magearna doesn't isn't threatened by Water Spout. Okay. So now I can click Trick Room. And I think switch out into my own Kyogre here for Regenerator. Maybe they Snarl me, but their team is pretty weak once Trick Room goes up. Just <laughs> try to dodge the sunlight right now. Okay. Yep, no max. They're probably just gonna snarl again. Yeah. That's fine by me. I guess this next turn is where things get interesting. Uh, especially given that it is Snarl Evil Tall, like maybe it is just an assault vest set and it's bulky. I get Trick Room up successfully. I don't want to max Starfall because I want Amoongus to be able to spore things. I also could have stayed in with Amoongus and spored Evil Tall there, by the way, but I wanted to cover for them trying to KO Amoongus. I mean, I'm down to just Dazzling Gleam and Water Spot in this position. I guess Evil Tall could Sucker Punch me. Okay, no Sucker Punch, no max, none of that, which is good. Good damage from Gleam. It's crit on Evil Tall, so that's definitely Assault Vested then. Okay, just good to confirm that. Solid damage on them both. They Snarl again, that's fine. It's mainly uh, whether or not Kyogre stays asleep this turn, uh, which is, I think, a pretty big question. And they do stay asleep. Okay, cool. That's really good. My well, minus two now. I'm down to switch Magearn out in Amoongus, reset the draw. Oh, I guess I could KO Evil Toll here, though, and get a, a special attack boost, but I'm already at minus two, so it's not really worth it. I think going out into Amoongus here and then just clicking Thunder into Evil Tall is fine. I guess the question is whether or not minus two Thunder KOs Assault Vest Evil Tall. But at least we got Trick Room up in this matchup. Kyogre switches, which I'm also happy to see. Okay. In Xerneas, perfectly fine by me. Trick Room is just really good into my opponent's comp in general here, I would say. So we have more Spore Pressure. Kyogre gets this KO, then the next turn I can switch it out into the Magirina to reset the special attack drops on it. But Evil Toll does hang on. Jeez. <laughs> and they go for another Snarl. That's okay, though. Okay. <clears throat> so we know it's Assault Vest Evil Toll, right? I have Pollen Puff as well. Xerneas can protect here or switch back out. How many turns of Trick Room do we have left? Two. Like, I'm not opposed to a Pollen Puff Kyogre plus Water Spout play this turn. Because Max Magearna is looking decent, but they are stalling on my Trick Room decently effectively as well, so that's one thing to watch out for. You know what? I'm actually down to bring in Magearna here and Spout. Basically, by doing this, I get more Regenerator, and I also give um, Magirna a special attack boost, which is actually really nice right now. Evil Tall switches out, okay. Into Kyogre, maybe? Oh, they actually go into Zacian. I mean, it's a minus three water spot, it's not going to do that much damage. Curious if Xerneas protects here, because otherwise Spore into that slot obviously puts them in a really bad spot. Yeah, so they protect. Okay, cool. That's fine. That's why I was thinking about Pollen Puff, but, um... Oh, that does nothing at this point. Wow. Rain stops as well. Curious what they Dynamax at this point in the game. I could Dynamax here, Steel Spike into Xerneas. And then go into my Zacian to give it a defense boost. Or Amoongus for a defense boost. I like going out into Zacian here because like I don't need a second round of Trick Room right now to win, I think. Okay, so we reset all the special attack drops. 
I think, like, basically what made this game hard was the Evil Toll hanging on with just the sliver of HP. They stay in with Xerneas. Okay, so I think Steel Spike should just KO them here. And, like, they're in a tricky spot where it's like, what do you want to Dynamax at this point? Uh, Kyogre lets us sleep and take in 40%, an Evil Toll that's at 10%, or Xerneas? Maxing Xerneas might actually be their best bet. Okay, we gear to maxes. No protect on either. No switch, which is perfect. So we should just get a one-hit KO here, right? Beautiful. Okay, uh, very critically a defense boost here. So I would expect to survive Behemoth Blade on Magirna now. I should do my Behemoth Blade calcs on Magirna. Like, I just don't know that calc at all because I've never played with Magirna before. Literally, like, yesterday trying out the format was my first time using it. Okay, they up for Behemoth Blade here. Even if they target Zacian, it's fine because I have the defense boost. And they do actually target Zacian, okay. Nice. Yeah, you can see how critical that defense boost is. Good call on their end, though. Covers for me switching out. Maybe Amoongus there then would have actually ended up being better. But the, the idea is, now that Trick Room's over, I have a jolly max speed Zacian out against both of my opponent's Pokemon, which is pretty dang good in this spot. And I have Wild Charge. So, like... I'm down to just Wild Charge Kyogre here, Steel Spike Zacian. Kyogre has to max here, I think. They don't max, though. And they don't protect Zacian. Okay. Nice. I think we win the game off this, then, unless I get crit by Zacian Blade onto Magirna. But the thing is, now I have a plus two max uh, Steel Spike onto Zacian. I'm pretty happy about how I, like, maintain Trick Room and then also, like, put myself in a good spot after Trick Room was over in this one. I think it was kind of cool. So they're going to go for Behemoth Blade. Presumably onto Magirna. Yep. Should survive that. Perfect. Yeah, and th this was the thing, right? Like, my opponent, I think, needed to Dynamax a little bit earlier. I think um, with Xerneas, like, they could have switched it out. I guess the tricky thing is, yeah, who do you Dynamax in this game? I think they kind of handicapped themselves by bringing Xerneas into a matchup in, uh, with dual steals. Because, like, Xerneas is just never really going to get going here. But when I was practicing with this team, I did have an opponent who ended up, like, uh, maxing Xerneas turn one. They had uh, Xerneas, Calyrex, Shadow Rider against my Magirna Amoongus, and I just went like Spore Trick Room, and I just fainted to Life Orb Astral Barrage plus uh, a Max Starfall, and then didn't get Spore off. And the game was just over from there. So, like, you can max Xerneas to stop against Amoongus here. And Xerneas is quite good into Evil 12 plus Kyogre, right? So, if you expect me to not play towards Magirna, that makes a lot of sense. But, uh, yeah. Now we can just win the game, and this is where uh, having Wild Charge is really nice, because I don't have to risk missing um, Play Rough onto the Kyogre slot. So, I think that's what's uh, pretty cool about this team. Like, you have a fast option with Tailwind, where you can go, like, uh, Victini, Evil Tall, Kyogre, Zacian, or you have a slow mode with, like, Victini, plus Magirna, Amoongus, uh, and then Kyogre, Zacian in the back. We haven't really brought Victini out, though, today, right? Instead, we've gone with, like, Magirna and Mungus, just because our opponents haven't had, like, super good anti-trick room with the lead matchup immediately. So, yeah. Let's look for one more. Okay. Third match here. This is a really cool team. I like it a lot. Indeedy, Palkia, Magirna, Groudon, Incineroar, Eboltal. I feel like right now everyone's just using, like, really fast-paced offense, but I think my opponent's team actually has a lot of room for bulk, and it is somewhat trick room-centric. I think Palkia is just a really cool pick in general, so I like what they have. Um, yeah, I really like what they have. Um, one thing I do want to quickly double check is just the base HPs of all the Pokemon on the opposing side, like whether or not NDD can just snipe them off. It's the beginning of the format, so it's always like just learning new things, and this format in particular is really learning new things because I've just never played with any like some of these Pokemon. So Palkia's base 90... Yeah. Magirna is base 80. And then Evil Tall here is base 126. Yeah. I mean, the thing about Victini is that it's like, you have to really worry about Evil Tall. They could play a Trick Room oriented game, but then Amoongus could be good. Mm. I want to give Victini a shot just because I haven't really brought it out yet. What do I want to go with? Like, I want Victini... What if I go with Victini Amoongus, actually? Kyogre Magirna. That's interesting to me. It should probably be Zacian over Magirna, no? No, I don't hate the Magirna pick, though. It's 
quite good into Palkia, quite good into Eboltal. I can Steel Spike to deal with Groudon. I think Magir- uh, sorry, Victini Amoongus is in a really strong lead, because it's like, I can... I have to deal with Dynamax. They go with Indie Magirna. Honestly, not terrible here. I guess the main thing is that Magirna can go for Max Starfall to set up the Misty Terrain, thus preventing me from clicking Spore. Um, which can be kind of annoying. I'm also curious if Indie is like Psychic Seed here. Because if it's Psychic Seed, I can actually just try to snipe off Magirna, but it's not seeded. I think here, turn 1, I'm down to U-turn into Indie to break Focus Sash and then Protect with Amoongus to go out into my Kyogre. Magirna Protects, awesome. That's great. Amoongus Protects as well. Oh, that's really good damage from U-turn, wow. They're probably going for Expanding Force here if I had to guess. Hmm, so I could switch in my Magirna, no? 76. Are they going to be min speed? Nah, I'd rather go out into Kyogre here, I think. I think U-turn's a really critical attack on this Scarf Victini, by the way. Yep, Expanding Force, okay. That makes sense. We're trying to just, you know, deal as much damage to Amoongus as possible. This next turn now, I can just go for something like Origin Pulse plus Spore. I think that's really strong here. Unless it's Safety Goggles Magirna, which could be the case. Like, we're running Goggles on Magirna here. Although, I've thought about changing the item on it. Because it hasn't really been too relevant in, actually, like, all 20 games I've played. Indeed, he switches out, so it's probably Groudon coming in. Yeah. Fine by me, I mean... Uh, what they have to do here, then, is Dynamax Magirna to prevent me from putting them to sleep, or they have safety goggles. They're maxing. Yeah, good play. Very good play. Uh, now I wish I kind of Pollen Puffed instead, but that's okay. Mainly curious if their Magirna is min speed. Because basically, like, the strength of Victini is once your opponent commits their max, you can final Gambit with a lot more ease onto everything else. But... For example, here I had a really strong play, which was Max Geyser, Self Pollen Puff. That would have been amazing here, but I missed it. Okay, Kyogre actually didn't take that much. I just don't know how fast Kyogre is relative to their Groudon here, because the Kyogre does not really have speed investment. But that's a nice play by my opponent. Well done, well done. Like, I could max here. I could max Geyser into Groudon and then self Pollen Puff into Kyogre. I think I'm down for it. It comes down to if their Groudon has, like, a good amount of speed investment. I mean, Kyogre here is not really that fast at all. We really don't have that much speed investment. But basically, if you look at what I have in this matchup, like, what else am I going to Dynamax, right? This is why the Pollen Puff play last turn would have been better, because I need to protect my best max option, and I didn't do a good job of doing that. We are faster than Groudon, though, which is huge, but I don't expect Geyser to KO here. Ah, it's actually kind of close, based off how much Origin did. Never mind. <laughs> they took that better than I would have liked. Okay. Precipice Blades actually misses Kyogre. That's huge. I'm wondering if they Starfall that slot as well. They went for Steel Spike, though. Okay, so maybe that actually didn't make too much of a difference. Oh, we hang on with 3 HP. Okay. Nice. Getting Pollen Puff off here is huge. That is excellent. Okay. We have a defense boost on Magirna. Got Victini in the back. And Dynamax ends after this turn. So, I think I'm down to just go for Max Geyser here to KO Groudon. I mean, I could just give up Amoongus here, no? The only downside in that is giving a special attack boost over. So, like, I could switch out into Victini instead.
I think it's fine to give a special attack boost over. Amoongus is such low HP at this point. They switch out Groudon, which makes sense. I think that's a good play. Ah, Palkia's their last one. Okay. Uh, given that Palkia is the last one, maybe I still needed to conserve my Magirna then. Or sorry, my Amoongus. Hailstorm into Palkia would have been stronger there too, because it covers for Palkia switching in. Oh, but they Starfall into Kyogre! Yeah, so that's the advantage of not switching out Amoongus that turn. That's huge. Continue to heal Kyogre back up, and now their Dynamax is over. How many turns of Misty Train are left? Because uh, now it actually makes sense to maybe swap out the Amoongus. There's still two turns. Okay. I'm down to just click Max Geyser into Magirna here. Like, maybe they switch out into Groudon, but that's fine. And then switch Amoongus out into... I mean, I don't want to eat a Hydro Pump on either slot. I could just protect Amoongus here, right? I don't hate that as an option. Yeah, because what is I Like, neither of these Pokemon are doing anything to me right now. I think Geyser Protect is fine. Magirna Protects. Okay, that's fine. Palkia here could angle for a Trick Room. But then Maya Magirna can take advantage of their Trick Room, which is not bad. And then with Misty Train almost expiring, Amoongus can start sporing things very quick, uh, very soon as well. They do Trick Room. Nicely done. That's fine. Uh, now I can pivot Amoongus out into Victini to sacrifice it in Origin Pulse. Leftovers? Oh! Room Service. That's sick. Okay, well, I am just going to Origin Pulse and switch out here. Now, this is a fun game. Like, a lot of the games I had in this format just, like, would end so quickly, but I, I really like the dynamic of this between, like, trick setting up Trick Room and them setting up the Misty Train and Pollen Puff. I don't know, it's just been really fun. Okay, Flash Cannon, perfect, that's fine. Into Victini, beautiful, we don't take much. I outspeed Palky under Trick Room, which is excellent. Get the Origin Pulse off. I actually don't mind not KOing Magirna here, because it gives me a free switch in. Spatial Ren, yep. Onto Bikini, does that KO? Oh, that did not do a lot at all. Oh, that's because Misty Train was up. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Three turns of Trick Room left. Magirna could very easily protect here. I'm still down at Origin Pulse. Uh, I'm actually kind of worried about their Groudon now. Origin Pulse U-Turn. Uh, Flare Cannon is fine here, because we're Assault Vested. Yeah, that does nothing. But now if I had actually clicked, like, Ice Beam... Into Palkia, that would have been pretty sweet. Ice Beam plus U-Turn into Palkia. I feel like I should win this, but the problem is that Groudon right now is looking really good into my entire team. Yeah, and they Hydro Pump here, that's fine. Okay. Victini was always going to be the sacrificial Pokemon at this point in the match. Rain stops. It's fine, they were going to set up the Sun anyway, no. Uh, if I go into Amoongus, basically... Oh, actually, they should be Assault Vest Groudon, right? Given how well they took my Water-type attacks, so I can... Ooh, they go into Indidi, though. Okay. They go into Indidi. I think that's okay. Man, this is actually such an intense game. Um... This is a really fun one to end on, win or lose. Two turns of Trick Room left. I could Spore either slot right now. I don't mind a Magirna switch in into Protect here, I think. Into Spore Dazzling Gleam next turn. The only way this loses is, I don't know, if they like Helping Hand Earth Power the Kyogre slot, but I feel like the odds of that are so slim. Uh, if I had just brought Magirna out there outright, by the way, over Amoongus, then I'd probably just win. Because 
like, what do they have against Magirna? Okay, it's just expanding force, that's fine. It comes down to Palkia's attack and how much it does to Magirna. That's actually a little more than I would have liked to take. It's Spatial Red, beautiful. Okay, so now there's only one turn of Trick Room left, right? So I can just go for Dazzling Gleam and Spore into Indidi. We know Groudon's slower than the Kyogre. If we get a KO, then they're forced to bring Groudon out, and then we win the Weather War, and I can just click Water Spout or Origin Pulse to end the game. Okay, Indidi follow me. That's perfect. I think that actually wins me the game, unless Palkia underspeeds me, which it shouldn't because Kyogre outspeeds it. So, yeah, Spore gets redirected, puts Indidi to sleep, Dazzling Gleam should KO Palkia. I get a special attack boost that way. Kyogre's there, or Groudon's their last one, but I win the Weather War against that. So, I, I simply just click Water Spout to win the game now. I think if they had brought Groudon out over Indidi, they would have had a better shot because Groudon at least pressures with Precipice Blades. But I guess the, what they were probably worried about is that, like, if it were Assault Vest, right, you can't protect. I, That's that's what I was saying, right? I'm fairly sure it was Assault Vest based off how well it took Origin plus, plus the Max Geyser. Uh, and so if you're Assault Vest, then they're like, okay, I know you can Spore me. So what my opponent could have done was bring out Groudon, then bait the Spore, and then switch out into Indidi, let Palkia KO Amoongus, and then go from there. But, yeah, now I can just Dazzling Gleam, Protect... And even if Groudon KOs us here, it's a free switch into Kyogre, and Kyogre can just Water Spout to end the game. Indeed, he takes a turn of sleep. They do Precipice Blades, yep. We did the dodge a Precipice Blades on Kyogre earlier in the match, which was really fortunate. I wonder if this gets a one-hit KO from the range we're at. It does, okay. This is always a safe way to play the game, right? Because um, I know that the Kyogre outspeeds Groudon, given the interaction earlier, and I know that they're Assault Vest as well. So now Kyogre can just come out and click Water Spot and end the game. This was a crazy battle, though. Um, out of all the games I've played in Series 13 so far, this is definitely my favorite. So we can Water Spout and just Pollen Puff. Kyogre. Unless it was a speed tie between Kyogre and Groudon, if which that's the case, then so be it. <laughs> but it's not a speed tie, and that's a double KO. Beautiful. Oof, that was quite the start to Series 13. Like, I still do not feel like I have my feet grounded in this format. Um, like, I, I, part of the reason why I grinded so many games yesterday uh, was just because I wanted to learn uh, as quickly as possible and just get acclimated with some of these Pokemon, uh, because I don't have that much experience. Or I have no experience using a lot of these Pokemon, so yeah. Either way, though, this was honestly a really amazing episode for the Magirna, so I'm really happy to feature, like, how good Magirna can be in this format. And so, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoy. Don't forget to answer the question of the day, and I'll see you all soon. All right, peace.